guys okay. have a seat. Make yourself at home. So uh, he's here. Is he? yeah. No, he's not here. Yeah, what group is this? He's in meetings all day. Oh, okay. Who are you meeting with? Shelby. Yeah. No, but no, they don't have a meeting. No. But we like no. to meet with somebody. Nobody's ever called to make an appointment. Oh, we didn't call. Who did you well, call to? But, you know, uh, we don't okay. know really Thanks. whether we have an appointment or not, but we would well, like to see him. He's not here. Can we speak with a representative of his then? We're auto workers, we're uh -huh. here in town, and he's had some very strong opinions about auto workers. Correct. And we would like to talk to him. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Well, he's not a or a representative. He's not available, but nobody called for an appointment. Oh. Well, we were here on other business, and while we're here, okay. we would like to speak to a representative. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Is he coming back today? He's not in the office. I know. Will he be back today? We're not in session today. Is he start tomorrow? No, I probably not till Wednesday. Not till Wednesday. He <coughs> doesn't even come to work every day. Thank you. Oh, he comes to work every day. Every day? When we're, when we're in session. Oh. Okay. When the urge hits. Don't we got to go to Alabama? You ready for us? Actually, our, uh, some of our staff from the banking committee that handles the auto bailout, yes. they're coming down to see you all. Well, okay. Thank you. Okay. Is that all right? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank sure. You very much. Okay. All right. Just hold all the cash to make sure we grab some. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's the treasury. That's it. That's where they were the big ones. They don't hold it. They print it. Storm the barricades. Well, we don't really storm, but we're, we're kind of nice, though. We don't bring no guns and clubs. And stuff. Vance here. Thank you. That was the French Revolution. Basically, we're just wondering what, what's going on with this uh, this loan for the auto industry. We don't, understand, we don't understand why this is taking so long to get, why it's being so difficult for the auto industry to just walk and get what a fraction of the Wall Street bankers got. They walked in, scooped up $400 billion and walked out. Auto industry is asking for a mere $35 billion. Comparatively speaking, it's not much. It's peanuts. And, we're, and, and they're asking that they'll pay it back. They're not asking for you just to write a blank check. So we're trying to figure out what is it that, that we can do to help you understand that this is a, it's going to cost a lot of jobs if this money isn't given to these folks very quickly. Well, a couple of things in comparison to the banks and, and the auto companies. I think if you follow Senator Shelby's positions, he's been against all of them. So he's consistent on that. And also, he's also been pretty clear about the work that's required by the committee in Congress before they undertake this kind of uh, effort and this kind of spending of money, which he has criticized in the past as not having taken place. So I think, oddly, you would find yourself in agreement with him on that. He thought that the money was given out too quickly, without enough examination, without enough Scrutiny about who's getting all that very reliable there, like he's trying to oh, and how and oh, how they're oh, going to and how they're going to spend the money. So I think we're all in agreement on that. As far as the auto money goes, I think you've also been you're, you're here because you've probably been listening to him. This mm -hmm. that he's also imposing this one as well. And not and not points. not only not only opposing this one. But bad aligning auto people. workers. Bad mouth the people. I mean, he doesn't. He doesn't. So. We're overpaid. We're lazy. Gold plated. Uh, gold plated uh, when, when did benefits. He say, when did he gold say? Gold plated benefits. Can we take it one at a time? Yeah. When did he say auto workers were lazy? He we, says they're overpaid. Overpaid. Figuratively speaking, this is this is what you you feel when you hear things like that. Yeah. When you tell us that we're overpaid, and I know. I know what we make an hour, and it damn sure ain't seventy-two dollars. It's forty-seven. That's with benefits, mm -hmm. and that's something that was negotiated in the heyday of the auto industry when we were making money. Ten we years. now, I work at American Axle Manufacturing, and we've taken <coughs> concessions. Where, where's uh, that located? That's in uh, downtown Detroit. It's uh, and, and also in Hamtramck. It spans two cities and its nine plants. And it's spun uh, off of General Motors. Spun off of General Motors, kind of kind of like Delphi, family owned and operated. It's a uh, uh, it's a private uh, subsidiary of General Motors. But anyway, it's a tier one supplier. What we do is, is uh, we, we have taken concessions and to the tune of $14 an hour for the working associates and, and uh, $11 an hour for a starting associate and up to $18 an hour for the, tra uh, the, the job setting associates that are, that are more skilled. And, and these concessions are not going to cover 
what your your average worker could pay for. You know what I mean? As far as buying a house and paying for a car and paying for his children, feeding his children. I mean, I don't know if you guys buy groceries in your own home or whatever, but it's a couple hundred bucks a week. You know what I'm saying? And these type of concessions aren't a living wage, is what I would consider it. You know what I'm saying? We're, whereas other, where the CEO of our company uh, skated out with an eight million dollar bonus. You know what I'm saying? One year, the guy made three hundred million dollars, and General Motors gave him an eight million dollar bonus. It just didn't didn't set right with us. You know what I mean? And, and he's asking us for for concessions. They were out on strike for eighty eight days. We stood out on strike, two hundred dollars a week. People lost their homes, lost their cars, families starving. I mean, it was you know the worst of the worst. So I've seen all this. So I understand what's going to happen to these people if they don't get this money. This has to happen. These guys got to get this money. You got to save this industry. No. And if you don't, if you don't, the next bailout is going to be a mortgage bailout for everyone losing their homes. And I'm, I'm talking about about half a million, a couple million people. Half a million people are just the tip. Of, that'll just be the first wave is the 575,000 UAW workers once this industry goes under. The second wave will be all of the businesses that support that industry, the, the restaurants, <coughs> The Railroad, railroads, dollars. medical industry, you pick it. It will be a total failure of our government. <clears throat> and who will be in charge will be the people sitting on the other side of this table when this happens. And that's who I will blame. A couple of things. Um, once again, I didn't find a point of agreement between you and Senator Shelby about people getting outrageous salaries for not performing. <coughs> Maybe he's only been an advocate for merit-based merit -based pay. He would probably agree with you getting $800 million for running a company into bankruptcy is not, or near bankruptcy is not something. Well, just like J.T. Bannister did at Delphi when I worked there. Mm -hmm. They gave him the great golden parachute after he destroyed the company. Then they sent Mad Man Miller in to cut, to cut our throats. But let's, mm -hmm. let's touch oh. on something real quick. And let me, I think this is an important, an okay, important topic. It, is General Motors hasn't ran the company into the ground the leadership of General Motors. It is the climate of the situation right now. People can't get loans to buy cars, okay? You've got to have A1 plus credit to get a, co a loan to buy a car. So General Motors, I don't feel, is responsible for what's going on in the industry right now. And he's asking for the resignation. The people who he gave $400 million to, billion dollars, I keep saying them. The people, be, okay, all right. He opposed that. That's fine. The people that got the $400 billion are the reason that we're in the situation we are and with the arm loans and the predatory lending and AIG and, and Citibank. And stupid borrowers exactly. who committed themselves and were completely overextended with their credit cards and not responsible for their own personal finances. No, 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 no. That's, no, no, no. that's called predatory no, lending. No, no. That's, that's called a guy calling your there house saying, man, I can get you credit. There Let's are, get it there straight. There are a lot of different things that led to this cause, not predatory lending alone. Oh, there yeah? are a lot of different Part things. Part of no, it was all the Delphi lending. closing all of There are things like that. There yeah, are yeah, economic yeah. conditions. There is stupid borrowing. There is predatory lending. There's a whole bunch of things. It's not as simple as somebody I calling I people up. call my grandma and try That's to get fair. her a credit there's, card. Those anecdotes happen all over the place. Can, can I make, a, can I make an analogy? Too. Can I make an analogy? There were. The facts are the facts. We are in a complex situation. It is not going to be made any easier by painting things black or white. Painting things black or white. I understand a lot of things decisions. feed into the dynamic, but what I'm telling yeah. you is there is a majority's fault here, all right? And it's the predatory lending. That is where it's coming from. I'm telling you, you don't think it's true, but I have member after member that comes into my office and tells me, man, you know, these guys called me. They told me to give me a lower rate. They told me to get saved money. They, they sat there. People are not they inherently pray. money people. Yeah. A lot of people don't understand nickels and, and dimes and cents and how to balance their budgets. And, and if they did, they'd be millionaires or trading on Wall Street or, or do something more than labor work. You understand? You don't walk into some guy's house and tell him you're going to save him money on his house payment and, and in actuality charge him an uh, arm and a leg and then give him an arm loan where it's going to shoot up three years down the road where he can't even afford to live in his house.